Hello everyone, I'm going to be doing some commentary on this valid Sudoku challenge, which I was made aware of by a friend of mine. The goal is, given a filled out 9x9 nine nine grid of numbers, can we determine whether this grid is a valid solution for a Sudoku puzzle? The first chunk of logic that I'm going to try to write here is this function contains 1 through 9. I identified that as a common check that I'm going to be needing in order to figure this out. So that's where I start first. Now throughout this you'll notice I have a little bit of trouble warming up as far as the syntax is concerned. And that's mostly because I've been writing in languages other than Java recently, like Ruby and JavaScript. So I might flub a few things. Now here I pause to think for a long time because I'm considering different ways to write this method, sorting, the list was the first thing I thought of. One problem with that was I didn't remember how to sort a, a collection. And another problem is I knew that sorting is n log n, a big O of n log n complexity, and I knew that I could do it in linear time. So despite the fact that the complexity is completely irrelevant for such a small list of numbers. I still wanted to do it in a slightly more interesting way. So my strategy here is going to be declaring this integer array here called found numbers. I'm going to use this as what is essentially a frequency array. It's going to store how many times we've seen each number so that the number in index zero in this found numbers array represents how many times we've seen the number one and the number in index one represents how many times we've seen the number two, etc. So now that I've successfully created a frequency array in found numbers, the only thing I need to do to make sure that my original list contains the numbers one through nine, is check that every element of found numbers is equal to one. So now I'm going to be making use of contains one through nine in order to check every row and every column of this nine by nine Sudoku puzzle. I know I knew that I was going to have to write two loops in order to do this one for every row and one for every column. I start out with eyes, but I'm concerned that when I go to write the second loop, I'm going to become confused about which index represents the row and re which 
index represent, represents the column. It takes me a minute, but I remember IntelliJ's nice little command, shift F6 to refactor a variable. So now we can continue on with the, the double iteration for row and column. So my overall strategy for writing these two for loops is for each row and each column, I'm gonna collect the nine numbers into a list and then throw them at the contains one through nine method. Here I'm making liberal use of the alt enter shortcut in IntelliJ to help me auto complete things, but uh, that doesn't teach you how to properly declare an array list. It took me a minute. So I started out with is valid equals true because I knew that I wanted to repeatedly do logical and. So that way, once one of these failed, I knew that the Sudoku wasn't valid. So the only way that the Sudoku could end up being valid is if everything and it together was true. And now here I'm gonna try to be clever with IntelliJ's refactor tool again. Pause to make sure I believe that what I just did was valid. So now I'm going to attempt to collect all of the numbers in a three by three. There's nine three by threes that I'm going to have to collect all the numbers for. And I knew I wanted to generalize this logic, this, this logic. So I started out declaring a couple of variables that I expected to be generalizing on. These are the variables that I would expect to pass to a method. But instead of just starting with the method, I want to just write the logic for it for one iteration, for one three by three, just so I get a feel for it. And then of course, if the logic ends up being too complicated for a method, I have the option of just using copy and paste if I really want to. Usually generalizing becomes much easier once you've written the, written the logic for a single case at least once.
Now I'm just running through a few examples in my head to make sure that this makes sense. There's a little bug here right now, which I'm going to catch in just a minute. Coming up with names is always very difficult. So here's the first clue. Seeing that is valid is not already, de already declared, I think, oh, I must have to declare this, right? As it turns out, by copying the logic from the previous two for loops I had written, I was neglecting to understand that contains one through nine expects a list with nine elements. We only get nine elements once we've gone through these, both of these nested for loops. This looks good, so I'll just copy it down eight more times, making sure to count carefully as I do that. Here I need to remember or deduce what the row and columns are for the top right element in each of the three by threes in a typical Sudoku set up a nine by nine. Take a minute to look at everything. I believe everything looks right at this point, so I'll try running it. So we see we get a fail message, which in this little testing harness I've written means that the test has failed. We'll find out later that my code is actually correct at this point, but the actual cause of the problem is not my code, but one of the test cases, which I expect is going to be a problem. I didn't have mu that much faith in the, the positive test case that I had, but regardless, I would still have to debug this. So my favorite method of debugging things has always been adding print statements. At this point, I need to find out the best way to print all the elements of my list that I'm passing in. Given that I decided at the start of this that I wasn't going to Google anything, I had to make do with what I remembered and what I could get IntelliJ to point out to me.
So I know that this this error message isn't quite right. And I I open up the actual collections source code um just to make sure that that class actually exists like I think it does. So I, I know I must be doing something wrong, but I decide that well, I know that arrays dot two string does what I expect it to do. So I'm just going to change my list to an array and that'll have to be good enough. I decide that along with each of these lines, I'd also like an indication of whether that line was determined to, to contain all the numbers one through nine. And now I'm pretty happy with the information that I've started printing out at this point. I am definitely surprised to find out that there are so few entries. I had expected to see 9 plus 9 plus 9 for both of the test cases. This is way fewer than that. Here I manually count them to see if there's anything significant about the number. I then try to compare these sets of numbers with my test cases. I realize that the first entry is from the invalid test case. And then all the other entries are from the valid test case. So what's really going on here is that Java is very smart and it knows that once it finds one false case, it can just skip right on ahead and print the result. And I was surprised by how smart Java is at this point. But now we've found the offending row of numbers. It is clear to me that there aren't the numbers one through nine in this last set of numbers. And so I now go and double check Google images where I originally found this valid test case to double check all of my numbers. After double checking all my numbers, I realized that the mistake was simply mistaking a nine for a six. And I take another minute to reassure myself that that was the only error. Try running it again and everything passes. And we see the expected number of rows in the print. So just for posterity, I go ahead and delete my print statements but I am essentially done at this point.